game of the year of the week of the day, but actually truly the game of the year at this time. This is UConn, Illinois. This is the best offense in college basketball. In my opinion, the most fun team to watch in college basketball against the best team in college basketball against the biggest dynasty that college basketball has seen since Florida went back to back in the mid two thousands. This is a maniac of a coach against a coach who once went by my father. This is the best player in this tournament thus far in this three game run through three games, Terrence Shannon against the most well-rounded starting lineup. This is a behemoth at center versus a team that will stretch you out to the perimeter at all five spots. This is a team without a point guard against a team with two point guards. This is the matchup of the tournament. And I can't wait. How are you feeling? I mean, good grief, Gregory. Set the scene, why don't you? I'm shaking. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited, man. It's going to be great. Hey, let, let, let this be known. Whatever the outcome, we deserve a classic game. This game needs to be a classic. It needs to be. And I hope it is. I think it's gonna be. So here's my fear. <laughs> let's let's just, oh, get, let's oh, just no. get the fears out of the way. And then we'll do the rest. <laughs> let's get the fears out of the way. I also want a classic. I think we deserve a classic. I hope we get a classic. I think we might get a classic. Here's my fear. My fear is that UConn just runs them out of the gym. And this entire, it just spoils this entire thing. Because that is absolutely possible. UConn is that good. UConn will run anyone out of the gym. They haven't played a close game in the NCAA tournament in two years. So I, what are you supposed to do with this team? I don't know. If Illinois was playing any other team in the country right now, I think you'd feel great that Illinois can go in the game. They're playing UConn. And UConn's UConn. And we're already saying coming into this one, Cart, like, ah, it's all gravy from here. I hate that shit. If the if the team's doing the yeah, this is we're not supposed to be here. It's all no, it's, no, it's, not, it's not. It's not gravy. It's not gravy. It's it's uh, it's house money. It's you're playing with house money. You think Terrence Shannon thinks he's playing with house money? You think Coleman Hawkins thinks he's playing with house money? These T Terrence Shannon's tweets that he's got three more with a lock emoji, and Coleman Hawkins talking about his respect for UConn and how ready they'll be when he dives into the film and he prepared like. Listen, all I'm saying, I get the fan base mindset of like, you know, we're not supposed to win this one. It's been a great year. That's all true. Not taking anything away. Why not go win one though? Why not? Like if, we, if we're going to say, we hope we get a great game, let's go into this. Like, yeah, this is going to be a great game. Cause if we're kind of shaking, like, uh, it's been a great year Then I'm getting scared. UConn's going to blitz them. Well, I'll tell you right now, no one on the team thinks that. So you don't got to worry about that. Okay. That's just in that's that's in general. They and it's honestly it's not up for debate. They are playing with house money. They are. They are because they are they are nine point underdogs. They are playing a team who in the in the last two years in their tournament run hasn't had a game within 15 points and they've won every single one. And they're playing a team that's coming off a 30 point win, a 30 point win, and another 30 point win. Mm. Okay. Well. Uh, playing with house money sucks. I just want to say that right now. You and I are going to go to the casino tonight. I'm playing with my money. I'm not playing with house money, okay? I want the risk of losing because it's going to make it that much sweeter when I go in and win, when I beat the house, okay? That's where I'm at. Illinois fans should, you know, obviously you want this one. Act like you could get this one. That's what I'm asking you to do. And I'm going to try and do that for the rest of this preview. Uh, okay, how does Illinois go about <laughs> trying to do this? Uh, a lot of their stuff offensively, I think, could work in theory because you're going to drag Klingon away from the basket. And Klingon's two-point percentage defense, his blocks, his rim protection are critical to everything UConn does defensively. So if Coleman Hawkins can play the five and drag Klingon away, I think that bodes well for Terrence Shannon to get some driving lanes downhill. I think that bodes well for Marcus Damas booty ball. We said last game wasn't going to be a good game for that. This game, I think it could be. I think this could be a game where Illinois' two stars could superstar their way to keeping them in this game. What do you what do you make of Illinois' offensive matchup here? Yeah, offensively, I think there are some things they do they can do to draw uh Klingon away from the basket because Klingon obviously is one of the best rim protectors in college basketball, but I'm, I'm interested to see 
kind of how Connecticut approaches this game defensively, like who is on who, because, you, you know, though Damas can do the whole booty ball back down thing, this UConn team is active defensively. They're connected defensively. I think that's one of the best things I can give them a compliment with. This team is very connected defensively, and they also compete extremely hard defensively while having the guys and the personnel to put together a great defense. That's why, you know, According to Evan Miyakawa, they are a top five defense in the country. Um, and it shows with what the pieces they have. But because the versatility of Illinois, it can be used to combat that. It could be Coleman pulling guys out. It could be Damas possibly having a mismatch because, you know, I'm not sure who Stefan Castle from UConn is going to check in this game. But Stefan Castle has been having a sh string of games where he just shuts down the opposing player's best wing or guard player. And he's done it a lot this season. Terrence Shannon is playing better than any guard wing player in the tournament right now outside of Zach Eady. So, and shit, you can make an argument he's playing better than Zach Eady. So it's like, you know, what is gonna, what's going to be the give or take in that? Um, you know, part of uh, Terrence Shannon's greatness is what he does in transition. Connecticut's a team that plays extremely slow. They're going to try to slow things down as much as they can. At the same time, for everyone who says that Terrence Shannon is just this free throw merchant, transition merchant, he's a guy who's been shooting, you know, knocking down 40% from threes in the games this tournament in this stretch and has been able to get downhill off pick and rolls as well. So it'll be very intriguing to see how Illinois' offense uses the versatility to their advantage and how Brad does, because we saw what he did in that Iowa State game. He, you know, used the mass posting up at the top of the key to combat what Oz was doing defensively. So it, it's it's going to be a chess match between those two coaches on how they how they approach things for sure. So I have a scary number for Illinois to start with. Uh, now, my scary numbers in the Iowa State game ended up not mattering. And I think we kind of predicted some of the game flow that I was like Illinois needs to get off to a great start. It's not going to be a Damas game. And then they did. So give them credit. Take this with a grain of salt, but you mentioned UConn plays slow. 319th in the country. They are very slow, which is strange. Normally, when you're the more talented team, you don't want to play slow. Like, that's a philosophical thing. If you have more talent than the other team, you always want more possessions because over time, more possessions mean the more talented team will win. Um, UConn's three losses this season, they've only lost three games. They're 34-3. and three. Their three losses came in the three games that the least possessions were played. So the slowest tempo games. Literally, if you put every game in order from most possessions, fastest tempo, to least possessions, slowest tempo, you get the 34 wins in a row down to the three slowest games, the three losses. Each one of those games had 62 possessions or less. So it kind of, it's counterintuitive because you would think, oh, UConn likes to play slow. You would think teams that speed them up might be the team that give them problems. It's been the opposite. Like, UConn plays slow. Maybe they shouldn't play slow. And the slowest games they've played have actually hurt them. That was a loss at Seton Hall. They lost by 15 points. Super slow game. Kadari Richmond torched them in late shot clock. Kansas on the road in Fog Allen. Four-point game. 60-possession game. I think Kansas, rightfully so, knew they needed to play slow, given the fact that they don't have anything more than three players. And then Creighton was actually the slowest game. The The game they got blown out at Creighton felt like a fast tempo, crazy game. Uh, 85-66 final score, only 59 possessions in that game. Greg, uh, that's a great stat. That's a scary, that's a scary stat though. That's scary. That's, that's what I'm trying to say because Illinois is not even going to attempt to play slow. And the more I look at this, that's, that's the number one thing that jumps out is terrifying for me with Illinois is like, I don't know that you can beat UConn playing a run and up and down fly around game. And that's all Illinois does. And I straight up don't know that anyone can beat them doing that. Yeah, I feel that because especially because if if you're trying to like if you're in my head and this is obviously not a given, but if you're a fast team trying to play slow, that's how you make mistakes. Right. That because you're not playing the style you're necessarily used to. They're not, you know, they they Illinois likes to do the Damas thing in the in the half court and they like to get Shannon downhill on ball screens and things like that. 
But let's not get it twisted. They want to get out and run. Like Shannon wants to get the board run. Coleman wants to get the board run, get easy looks, get open looks, get open shots. Connecticut is very good at styling open shots defensively. And also, if you make mistakes and you don't get good shots on your end, UConn's going to get good shots on their end because they're going to run their stuff and they got counters off of it and they run it extremely hard and they got guys that are connected and know what they're doing and Hurley has a plan and they're all playing as an extension of him. So if you if you aren't valuing possessions and valuing the ball, then UConn's going to come down and score on the other end. And that's that's that scares me because I don't know how to find the middle ground on I don't want Illinois to play slow because Illinois is not their best when they're slow. But also, like, playing fast technically feeds into Connecticut. So it's like you got to find the middle ground there. So here's the thing. Illinois can do both. They don't want to do both because their best, most powerful superpower is Terrence Shannon dunky dunk on your head in three seconds, right? That's that's sick. Nobody else in the country can handle that. But if they get slowed down and need to play slow, they got a killer at playing slow in the half court too in Damask. Like the, the more we talk through this, isn't this just a big Damask spot? And if you're UConn, who guards him? Because I, I would assume Klingon's going to have to – I mean, they might they might stick Klingon on Rodgers if he starts, but then Brad has to pull some strings and bring shooters in. Like, it, Klingon's the wild card. We don't know who he's going to guard. I would assume Castle's on Shannon, which is a big spot for a true freshman. And then who's on Damask? Are they putting Caravan on Damask? Are they putting – you can't put Spencer on Damask, can you? I think they might go Spencer on Spencer on him. And Spencer's a great defender, don't get me wrong, but Spencer would open the door wide open for Damas back you down game. Yeah, also Cam Spencer's got got some shit to him though. Like if there's a player I want in that spot that's gonna like take the challenge and someone just trying to back him down, I think that Spencer could be that player. I do too. But I mean he's given up two, three inches to Damask at minimum. Like I don't know. I just I if I'm if I'm trying to utilize Cam Spencer's gifts defensively, I don't want him getting posted up all game. I don't think. You know? So who who would you have guarding then? Like Tristan Newton? I mean, you can't have Newton guard him. I don't think there's a good answer. I think it might be Caravan, but like to me, I, the point is I think Damask can get what he wants here. And that when you talk about like if okay, if it was Shannon or Damask, obviously Shannon's the best player, and if he's gone for 35, that helps. But if we're saying like Illinois needs it to be a slow game, that's where UConn struggles the most. That's where their losses have come. Doesn't that benefit a, a 30 second back you down Marcus Damask with no one on UConn who can guard him? Kind of kind of meshes for me mentally here of like what Illinois can exploit is Damask on whoever's guarding him. Slow the game down. I hate saying this because I love Damask. I think that Spencer can can hang with the mask yeah okay yeah let's flip I, 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 like i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not panicking at that matchup okay Can we flip to the other side um because as good as you kind of defensively they're even better offensively and carl i actually have a shocking thing to report to you please do you know who the number one offense in the country is uconn UConn has overtaken Illinois as the number one offense in the country coming into this game. Big, I mean, that's got to hurt the pride of Illini Nation. There, there, I mean, let, let's let's make something extremely clear about this UConn team. I, I'm not sure where Purdue ranks because I think maybe they're the only other team that have a shot at this or Houston. There, I don't know. If there's another. There isn't another team that is top five in both offense and defense. Like we we talk about playing the game that who can win the national championship. We like picking like top twenty five, top of offense and defense. You know what's even better than that? A top five offense and a top five defense. Like, it's a bad team. Like, I I just hope I don't see any like, oh, this is uh this is Marquette Plus or any any of those type of phrases about this team because this this UConn team is a legit like juggernaut type. Yeah, team. it's an all timer. Do you let me put it point blank? Is this the best college basketball team that you have seen in your lifetime? Uh, my initial answer is no. 
Like, I think I would still take some of those Villanova teams with, like, Brunson, Bridges, DiVincenzo, Jenkins, Amari Spellman, Jay Wright. Um, but it's it's damn close. I have a a sentence to say. <laughs> I don't think this is the best team I've seen in my life. I think it's top five, top ten minimum. But I do think this is the healthiest two-year run a program has had since I've been alive. Because individually, I don't know that I would take this exact team over the Florida team. I don't know that I would take this exact team over the Villanova team you mentioned. It's a toss-up. I wouldn't hate you if you say it. But that Florida team that went back-to-back, that was one team. It was one team. It was all the same guys. For UConn to have a completely different team last year and then swap guys out, lose Sonogo, lose Hawkins, lose Jackson, add Cam Spencer, add Castle, and just be this good again, be even better, like that's – I've never seen a program do that. I've seen a special team come through, and then I've seen it takes a couple years for another special team. This is a, a juggernaut last year into a juggernaut this year, probably into a juggernaut next year. I have no idea. Dan Hurley's insane. But I think this is the healthiest two-year run I've ever seen a program have in my life. Yeah, and and they carry themselves like under like they 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 manufacture manufacture stuff, and I and not in a bad way, not like a front runner like manufacture like toughness type way. In an actual like, if you give them anything, anything that goes against them or that they can use against them that you can they can use against you, they will take it. I'll tell you right now. You tell me Hurley ain't throwing up on the projector. This team talking about I want or not the team, the fans talking about we want UConn celebrating on the streets, celebrating with Alma. They are just because Hurley's a maniac and every other player on this team is wired like Hurley. So they're all maniacs, too. And they're skilled maniacs. And that's why they're a top five offensive defense. And that's why they don't lose basketball games. What, what how many basketball games they lost? Like we're not joking here. This team has not had a close game in the tournament in the last two years. Mm. Yeah. It's insane. It's truly insane. 13 points. The closest margin of tournament game has been. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's scary. It's gotta be scary. Um, who do you trust most in this game on either team player, coach, anybody, who do you trust the most? Darren Shannon. You trust him more than everyone on UConn. Mm -hmm. You trust him more than Dan Hurley. Right now, right at this moment, I do. Wait, no, we can't do coaches, just players. Oh, I, that wasn't the question. Are you are you asking? Oh, I watch. Oh, I ask? oh, I, oh, oh, okay. I trust Hurley. I trust Hurley. You trust Dan Hurley the most in this game. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I do too. I feel like you have to. I feel like that's the only right answer. You have to. He's yeah. earned it. Out of respect, you have to. And Coleman Hawkins said as much. Let's give Coleman some credit for being very respectful in uh, the pregame. I still, I, I think, man. If I could place a bet with our friends at my bookie, if I could get a prop on UConn to win this game and then Dan Hurley in the post game to say, well, yeah, Brad Underwood probably should have watched more of us. I would, I would hammer that. I think that's been circled by Mr. Hurley. I can promise you that. Um, one of our favorite games, like rank the starters or go position by position. Let's just rank the starters. We did this in the discord earlier this week, but we were combining Purdue, Illinois and UConn players in, in a, big group and said if it was one through 15 where where is everybody it's interesting results wise how, how do you rank the 10 starters in this game i think terrence shannon is one yep oh god this this is so tough when you do uconn players because it's like who is the best player that's it's not like their a... their best player and their fifth best player could be different guys every single game it's right insane. Um, so, uh, I probably put Tr Tristan Newton second, I think I go Tristan Newton second. I would go Damas third. Oh, stop it. I'm sorry, but stop it. Illinois fans can get mad. There's, you can't put anybody from Illinois ahead of Klingon Newton at minimum. You can't. I, I, I got Newton. I got Newton ahead of him. Klingon needs to be ahead of Damask. I was going to go Klingon next. Klingon needs to be ahead of Damask. I'm sorry. Okay, Klingon, Klingon, Damask. Even, even that scares me a little bit, but okay. Yeah, I, well, I, I thought about putting Spencer above Damask. 
hassle too, man. He's lottery. Yeah, I, it's <laughs> tough, man. It really is tough because, okay, I'll do this. You got three guys that are non-negotiables, just like Coleman, Terrence, Damask, those guys. There's there's like four or five non-negotiables on UConn, Newton, Castle, Spencer, Caravan, Klingon. Like that that five is undeniable. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Damask is somewhere in the top five. Probably fourth. I, I would go Shannon, Klingon, Newton, interchangeable there. Damask four, Spencer five, but so close. And then Castle Caravan six seven before you get to Illinois third, but like no disrespect to Coleman Hawkins, but like that that that's what this is. And then like it, Illinois fourth and fifth best guy are like on a different page in a different notebook than this ranking system. And that's going to be tough. They're going to need, they are going to need superstar performances from all of their superstars. And by all of them, I mean, Shannon Hawkins, Damask, all three of them need 10 out of 10 games for me to even consider that Illinois can win this game. And if they get that, they can. But if one of these guys has a stinker, it's going to be really, really tough, just given how good UConn's other parts are. Um, what do you think Hurley's going to try and do to stop Shannon? Uh, well, I think Castle's going to get that assignment. He's going to get that assignment first. Um, and I think that he's going to put an emphasis on, and not even put an emphasis on it, but it's just something they do well on their shot selection and how they take care of the ball, not leading to transition runouts and transition baskets. I think that like, there was some crazy stat of them during the, the, um, during the San Diego state game, San Diego state, by the way, a top five defense in the country uh, or top 10, I think, whatever, whatever metric you want to use, they're top 10, really good defensive team. They were averaging in the first half, like 1.93 points per possession, just like an actual disgusting, sick number of efficiency offensively. So them being efficient offensively will help them, I think, stymie them in transition. And then I think that, you know, Hurley being the guy that he is and the game plan, I think he's going to have a defensive game plan to um, make sure that, one, he's not going to do the Iowa State thing. The Iowa State thing was leaving Shannon open for some reason off of double teams and, like, help. They're not going to make that mistake because they're more disciplined than that. Um, and I think that's going to be a combination of Castle and then doing something that keeps clinging as close to the rim as possible. I can see Klingon guarding Ty Rogers. I could even see Klingon guarding a guy like Gary a, and like you make him hit a couple to respect it. And then you adjust because like, I, I, I don't know if Gary is going to be able to hit enough threes to make you respect him out there. And if he does, you adjust, but I think you're living with that. If Klingon's by the hoop and Terrence Shannon isn't getting you know, his amount of shots up. Hurley's too good of a coach to let the best player like out basically beat him. Like it might happen, but he's not going to aid him in that. I think Otz gave Terrence Shannon, he opened the door for him to have a good game. Terrence Shannon's going to have to bust that motherfucker if he wants to beat Hurley in them. Okay. Had a little intermission there. Had to go dad duty. Meet Murphy Waddell, by the way, my daughter, everyone. Uh, Murphy, Illinois, are they going to win this game? Honestly, I'm just shocked she's not crying at you. She hates you. I, okay, I hate's a strong word. Okay, we've had some good times. We've had our tough times. We're working through it, and I love her. Hi, Murphy. Hi. Hi. Okay, this is not what the people came for. Do you want to give them your prediction presented by my bookie? Uh, I do, and this one is going to be both heart and breaking it down. Uh, it's first of all, how am I supposed to make a? Hit presented by my bookie with cuteness going on in the background. I'm going to say that UConn wins this game 82 to 78. So we get a classic. That's what you think. We get a, we get a, we get a classic. Yeah. We would love a classic. Um, does Illinois like lead at any point? Like, are they feeling really good? Or, or we're going back and forth. Classic. Oh, that would be fun. How many does Terrence Chan have? 27. Okay. Uh, I think this game is close for 30 minutes, and then I think the wheels fall off. And the, this is the nicest gift I can give you, Illinois fans. I'm picking UConn. I think this is a back-and-forth, one-possession tie game with 10 minutes left. I know. I'm sad, too. I want Illinois to win. 
Uh, I I think UConn goes on like a nineteen to two run to close it, and they end up covering their thirteen points. They always do. Makes sense. I know. But... I'm so sorry, Murray hates this. Not like uh, that. Man. Good luck, Illinois. Good luck, UConn. Thanks for following along all season. We really appreciate it. We will recap this game as soon as it is over. And uh, let's pray this is as good as we want it to be. If you've been watching our videos on the Sleepers Media channel this March, then you know already that our presenting sponsor is MyBookie. MyBookie is our favorite place to place bets, and you can place bets with us. Card, tell the people about MyBookie. Let me tell you about MyBookie quickly here. It has absolutely everything you need. It has odds boosts, parlays, expert predictions, alternate lines, anything that you need. MyBookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. And right now, we have a first deposit bonus up to $1,000 if you use promo code SLEEPERS. That's promo code SLEEPERS for, I almost messed that up, Greg, but it is promo code SLEEPERS for a first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. The madness is winding down, but there's still plenty of time to get some bets out there. Do so with my bookie, the official sports book of SLEEPERS Media. Yeah, that's promo code SLEEPERS, or as Card says, promo code SLEEPERS. (laughs) <laughs> it's promo code sleepers. Uh, thank you, my bookie. Link in the description of this video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Oh.